Sag. Welcome to your end of February 2021 general tarot update. It's Raina here. So I did start this reading. That's why the cards are laid out, but I had to erase a bunch of files from my phone because I wasn't going to be able to record very much longer. So I guess I'm just going to start all over again. I'd only just gotten into the reading, so no real loss there. So the central theme at the end of the month is the Four of Pentacles. Don't mind the lavender oil stain on the card, which I don't know if I'll be able to get out. I hope I will. Um, this is a card of a firm foundation in your finances. I always like to see this card. Sound money management. Maybe you've done something that took a lot of work and now you're seeing the payoff from, from that. This can be a card of inheritance, um, but something to do with um, uh, money coming to you or you managing what you have. In the past position, we have the Eight of Cups, and this is a card you can see the person walking away. Now, walking away from cups means walking away from emotional um, situations, but in this case, it's something that is not fulfilling. So the person no longer has this desire to invest in that, that whatever that thing is, because they're, they're not getting those, um, benefits from it anymore. And so an example would be that, um, if you have been in a relationship and I was joking when I first did this, or when I did this the first time, when I started the first time about, the last two cards that I got, because I'm always trying in these rings not to get into relationships um, because sometimes I'm doing separate love readings and I just want to, it seems like I always am talking about relationships and I really want to talk about other things. It can be kind of boring at times to talk about relationships. And uh, and yet that that's exactly what it can be. So the money could be good. You can secure the money like let's say it's a divorce for instance or if you were let, let's say you were not married but you were living with someone and you walked away from it and you were like oh thank god i kept my own checking account or something like that because now i don't have to worry that this person can have um some sort of um claim to the money that i have in the bank or or, or just, I'm so glad that I was consistent about saving. You know, with Sag, it's not always like that. A lot of times Sag is um, just, you know, have a hard time saving money because we tend to be very spontaneous people. We tend to just like living in the moment and not thinking ahead. So you might be kind of relieved about something that you did that, is connected to a relationship that has is no longer uh, viable. Now, there might be some of these relationships that are not a romantic relationship, that it's in some other, maybe a parent-child relationship or something that you still protected yourself with and that you're grateful that you um, could see the writing on the wall, you know, somehow. The higher message is the temperance card, and that's what kind of goes along with this in terms of money matters, this idea of being, you know, not too much in the material nature, and also not so up in the clouds spiritually that you are not acknowledging, hey, I'm in the material world right now. This is where I am. I may wish I was on, you know, in 5D or, if, you know, if 5D was an actual uh, physical location or some kind of a mental plane where I could go and just hang out and I wouldn't have to deal with anything material. Boy, would I love that, but I know better. Um, so temperance to me almost should be a card for uh, Libra, this idea of balance. Um, but because Sag is associated with you know, being half animal and half man, the, the animal part is, it's kind of funny. It's like the animal part is that untamed, uh, 
part that is that to me is part of the world and the man is part of the higher nature. And um, somebody uh, said to me once, as above, so below. So this idea, but I, 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 you know, I still haven't really totally figured out what that means uh, because this is not above. I mean, where we are right now is not above. Now we can, we can have a consciousness like that, but we also have to deal with the things that are right here materially in this material world. So, um, anyway, that may be kind of on the spiritual level showing you that, um, you were able to maintain that even keel in some way. Now here's another four that is the challenge card, the four of cups. The four of cups is a card of dissatisfaction, um, with something. Now, not that they're exactly the same, but there is a connection that I sense from the four to the eight of cups. Besides the fact that they're both cups, it's like when you feel dissatisfied, do you look for something better? Do you, do you leave the current situation or do you try to make that current situation better even when it's a lost cause? Because sometimes people are in denial and they allow themselves to stay in that inertia, in that dissatisfied state. Even Sages, who can be quite active, have the ability to do that. And, uh, and on the other hand, do you give up too quickly? You know, do you always blame outer people, places, and things for your dissatisfaction and not look at yourself? You know, sometimes that eight of cups to me can be chasing a fantasy or tra chasing some kind of an illusion that it's going to be better over here. The relationship that I have is not satisfactory, so I'm going to leave it and I'm going to go to this other relationship or um, I, I'm tired of that spiritual teaching. I'm going to go to this other one and not realizing that... Um, these things are still external to you. And uh, sometimes when people are really uh, out of touch with themselves, they can totally believe that it's the fault of somebody else. You know, they say different, fa um, different faces, same places or something like that. You know, just meaning that idea of going from one thing to the next, one person to the next. Um. And it's interesting that in the middle is that four of pentacles because um, in some cases you may be looking for, if this is like a job situation, that is your first um, concern when you take a job is, is it going to provide me financial security, which is not something that is just a, uh, universal across the board. The person could very well have an overdeveloped need for financial security because of their own, you know, past trauma and just, you know, emotional makeup that they are never feeling safe with their material resources. And these things to me, a lot of times go back to other lifetimes because there's no rational reason for them. You know, some people are, uh, you know, I was thinking about this not too long about, ago about kleptomaniacs, people who just steal what isn't nailed down. And some of these people are wealthy and they're, and, and people who are not really conscious of why people do what they do, they'll say, that makes no sense. Is that person crazy? They're wealthy. Why would they do something like that? Well, duh, you know, it's because that that person has like a pathological um, fear of not having enough that they can't, they literally feel like if they walked past something that is available for them to stick into their purse or pocket, that somehow they, it will come back to haunt them. And so, so, you know, getting very clear about 
you know, your motivation when it comes to anything that you do, whether it's a relationship or the job that you choose, the job, the type of work that you're doing. Yes, it's very, very true that sometimes people do things that they don't really love doing to survive. But that's not what we're talking about here. Material security may have absolutely nothing to do with um, what the dollar amount in the bank or somebody's, you know, expenditures for the month. It, it may, but it may not. Because some people will not feel secure even if they have enough. So that that's something to look at for some reason. And with relationship issues, also that feeling of, um, you know, why do, why, what attracts you to somebody? Because the four of cups can be that you're not feeling it. And if you're not feeling it, then why are you there? Or why were you there? And if you're leaving, who's to say that you're not going to repeat this pattern? Just looking at it from those terms. What's coming in? The lover's card. So this could be, you know, running into the arms of somebody else. And so I'm not going to, you know, say what I just said. But um, in some cases, this might be that this is somebody that you really love. This is a Mercury retrograde. Um, the period of time that I was intending this reading is from the middle of, of uh, the month. Like, we'll, we'll say, yeah, you know, even though it's a short month, we'll say 16th, 17th until the 28th. And as I record this, there's still Mercury retrograde happening. So uh, have you heard back from somebody in your past? Are you running to that person? Because you see that you don't have that kind of connection with the person that you're with. Well, you know, that may be something. I mean, these two cards are really good cards. This is a marriage card, Ten of Cups happily ever after. So it could certainly suggest something like that. Um, this may be with the four of pentacles that you held fast to something you held fast to your values. Um, you know, if you've had a spiritual awakening Sag in recent months or years, you may have, um, decided a long time ago that you wanted something better than what, than what you were dealing with. And uh, the lover's card can really be a choice that you make. And that might be the test. Are you going to go towards something that you love? And even if you don't have any guarantees of what's going to happen. The outcome card, the Ten of Cups, is happily ever after. It's that card of, um, you know, something that you might look back on and say, wow, that was a turning point in my life. And I... Um, decided to, you know, take a chance. I don't feel that this is a reckless chance though, because I feel like with the four of pentacles, you may have already created that foundation for yourself. Obviously there are different timelines or different, um, scenarios that might be at play here that we could read in different ways. So, um, you know, if this is a romantic situation. Maybe you're with an earth sign and believe it or not, it works. I would say Virgo, possibly both mutable signs, maybe both in intellectually compatible with one another. The other earth signs are Taurus and Capricorn. But um, in any case, Sag, I hope that you enjoyed this. There is going to be a full moon in Virgo. <laughs> So maybe it's a Virgo on uh, February 27th at eight degrees of Virgo. For those of you Sages who are between zero and eight degrees of Sag, this will likely, I'm assuming, fall in your 10th house of career and could be a promotion of sorts. So maybe that's a hard work paying off for you in your career that you finally get noticed. You finally get that reward. For the rest of you, it'll be in the ninth house. So this could be more of a philosophical download. Uh, or realization that you're having. Maybe you're um, graduating from college or quitting college because you um, are trying to save money. For perhaps you 
don't feel that you're getting what you put it, put into it and you just don't want to um, deal with this. So that's a possibility. In any case, have a great month if you'd like a private reading. Um, you can click on the link below. Take care. Bye.